Here in part four, let's talk about another aspect of angiosperm evolution, often associated with the coevolution between plants and animals. That is the presence of secondary compounds and how they are now an important part, not only of plant-animal interactions, but an important part of human diets. Secondary compounds are compounds that are not part of primary metabolism, that is, respiration, photosynthesis, synthesis of cell walls, synthesis of membranes. So secondary compounds is a term which has uh, developed in the literature over the last century, and it refers often to compounds that are known to be toxic to different organisms that are produced by plants. All members of the angiosperms produce secondary compounds and there's been a strong association in the evolution of plants, animals, and secondary compounds. We use these secondary compounds in our food every night. Within this group, we find star anise. Within this group, the piper alleys, we find the black pepper, part of our salt and pepper diet. Within the loralis, we find bay, we find cinnamon, and we find avocado. I bet you didn't know that the cinnamon that we use in our cooking and as one of our spices is actually the bark of the cinnamon tree. Within the magnolia, we find nutmeg, mace, papa, other kinds of very uh, important parts of our diet. But it is in the monocots and the eudicots that we find the greatest diversity of foods. We'll talk about that in a second, but just let me give you one example of a monocot, and that's ginger. Of a dicot, consider the chili pepper. So each spice component, component exists as a toxin to reduce animal herbivory or to reduce microbial activity. So what we take as something in moderation as a flavor that we add, actually evolved as a mechanism to reduce herbivory or to reduce microbial activity. Here you see some of the uh, diversity of spices that I found in a Turkish market. Here's all the different kinds of chilies that you can find as a spice in a Nigerian food market. We have faculty at the University of Utah who have built careers studying plant secondary compounds and identifying plant secondary compounds that benefit humans because they have a biomedical application. One of those faculty is distinguished professor Lissy Coley, who has built a career trying to understand what compounds are produced, why they are produced, and do they have benefits. So some of the benefits that we'll, we will find in plants, uh, for instance in foxglove, is digitalin or uh, which is found in digitalis, which helps on heart medication conditions. What about things such as salicin or salicylic acid? That comes from willows, and a common name that you and I know is aspirin. Lizzie Coley and others have been involved in studies isolating different taxols that come from the Pacific U, and those are associated with treating cancers such as ovarian cancer. We have some that are associated with pain relief, such as morphine and coding. So quite a few compounds that are part of our medical establishment today are naturally occurring secondary compounds in plants whose primary function is to reduce herbivory or to reduce microbial activity.